Radiant team pick. Winter Wyvern. Radiant team pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. I speak for the trees. Alliances turn to pick. Tiny. Alliances turn to Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Beyond the summit presentation of the Star Ladder European Star Series 13. We got a match between Alliance and Arcade Power Rangers, and we're gonna be going into game one of this best of three series. So a uh, nice little showdown here between the Seeds, uh, Swedes and the CIS, but it should be a very, very interesting game between the two teams. A lot of them, uh, players on these teams, bring a very active play style, try to get very involved. And of course, you can't always uh, count out the rat potential from Alliance. They've been doing a lot of work in that regard for a lot of their games, and I'm excited to see what they bring to this series here. Uh, well, I am Blaze, broadcasting on behalf of the Beyond the Summit, and let's get into the draft. So, we're going to be looking at an IO first pick from a lot recently, actually. They've uh, tried to just master the ability to use that global potential of the hero. Uh, we saw four Clovers had an interesting response to that by picking up Tiny for themselves in an offlane position for Bambo, but we don't see anything uh, as interesting as that for Arcade Power Rangers. They're just going to answer with Wyvern and the Nature's Prophet, uh, two heroes that will be able to respond to the relocate quite effectively. Winter Wyvern, if you relocate the Tiny in offensively, immediately can just put the Winter's Curse on the Wisp, and that'll essentially allow uh, force Tiny to betray his ally, to blow up his own body, and take that tether heal away so wyvern can deal with it pretty effectively the nature's prophet can teleport to wherever the relocate is to respond and make sure that you're not caught outnumbered and that's a pretty key factor that also takes it off the board from admiral bulldog so banning out the broodmother the doom and the uh, picking up the furion means bulldog has less options to work with going into the later phases of the draft so excited to see uh, what he's going to end up playing, but in the meantime, we've got a few more picks on our hands. Bane is going to be most likely in the hands of my nuts, and we'll see what he can accomplish on the hero. In the meantime, Disruptor and Queen of Pain were picked up by Arcade Power Rangers, so really emphasizing team fight here. Their ultimates are very powerful here. In particular, I'm um, obviously, wow. <laughs> More counter to the IO Tiny. They are putting a lot of eggs in this uh, basket where essentially Alliance can no longer offensively relocate. If you're relocating into Wyvern Disruptor and Nature's Prophet, Ten you're going to be losing that fight, most likely. So what we're going to see instead is Alliance are just going to change their tone and use IO to rat. They're going to use the relocate defensively more than often than offensively, and that'll allow them to safely push lanes because only the uh, Wisp is at risk in that case. Get his buddy out, and it just comes down or not, uh, he gets out after he's forced back 12 seconds later. So, we know that Arcade Power Rangers can win the fights. They know that Alliance won't be able to offensively relocate on them, but how do they spread the map out and still find these opportunities? We're just going to see Bulldog on the Nyx Assassin. I love this hero with Wisp in general. Um, it's a great hero to set up the ganks, especially in 6.85. Nyx Assassin's Vendetta allows him to really close in on a target, jump on them, dish out a lot of damage, nearly finish them, and if necessary, Io Tiny can jump in and follow through on that. You can often turn a single isolated kill that Nyx Assassin can almost handle solo into two or more because of the people that come in to try to help situation. Along with that, you're up against four intelligence heroes, so the mana burn is going to be quite efficient forward to it. Um, beyond that, uh, we're going to see the Slark and the Centaur bands. They do have a couple AoE stuns against the Slark, but generally speaking, I would say Slark is uh, a counter to Nyx in the sense that the Carapace does almost nothing to Dark Pact, and it's just really annoying to deal with them, especially if you can find a BKB. So the band hit uh, that out, but in the meantime, we're going to be seeing that it's like safe lane wind ranger safe lane wind ranger bane combo looks pretty good and then loda and my nuts can take the io tiny the mid it's actually my nuts on the io this time around i think he, he played it I, I just look back to the old times where ake used to play it a lot after egm left the team but 
Uh, obviously, both of them are f capable of it, and Ake will be playing the Bane here. So, Juggernaut's going to be the last pick here for on, and we'll see how that fares against most of what Alliance are bringing. In general, I like the Juggernaut. I think it brings a lot of value with the Omni Slash against lower armor heroes. Problem is, they are able to pick a Windranger in response to it, and just Windranger in general is, is a great hero for uh, evading strikes, and for just getting out her own bit of physical damage there. I think Juggernaut's going to have some issue there. So... Oh, be pretty active laning. I think Alliance will maybe try to force the issue with the Bane bottom a little bit here. We'll have to see, but uh, I think there's some value in like the Bane Nyx lane to get going and to force the Juggernaut out of his comfort zone. Wyvern Disruptor, though, that's a difficult support to go up against, so I'm not sure how much, how many resources they're willing to allocate there, especially with only Boots first on the Bane. Boots first on Bane is kind of a setup for a nightmare type play. Like if you want to go nightmare toss back, that'd be really cool, and I can see a lot of value there. But otherwise, you're you're not able to sustain yourself as easily until you get some at least a clarity uh, to brain sap multiple times. Anywho, uh, Treant's gonna be scouting things out. Let's go over the lineups real quick here. Again, this is game one of the best three, and uh, we're gonna be looking at Power Rangers. J4 is gonna, the captain of the team, is gonna be running on the Disruptor support. Consumables here with one branch. Arash is gonna be the solo mid queen of the game, starting with a Null Talisman. Very interesting cosmetic set there. Ignum is gonna be running on the Wyvern, also very uh, selfless in his item buildup. There's a lot of healing selves, a lot of intention of winning the lanes, but it's going to take a while before they themselves progress their real items. Nature Prophet's going to go boots first to the offlane. Cheshire Cat, this guy knows his Nature Prophet. Like, obviously everybody looks to Bulldog for the Nature Prophet pick, but Cheshire Cat has been doing it for a long, long time. He used to always go Phase Boots, Midas, Necronomicon. Just every single game. Sometimes you can see a Shadow Blade from him, but barely. And, uh, I don't know, this guy just, he's been uh, as much of Classic Fury and Picker as Bulldog himself, I would say. Anyways, uh, Loda, my nuts, actually going to be taking the Tiny Wisp to the safe lane, and this lets uh, Windranger really control the Queen of Pain early. Um, she's going to be having a pretty good time in this matchup, I would say, uh, just especially if Ake poke prods at Barash a little bit here. Down bottom, you've got Admiral Bulldog, the Nyx Assassin, starting boots first himself. And uh, having that impaled just in case uh, he's caught in a dicey situation. Obviously, the Spike Arapus won't do too much to Tron's Blade Fury to have a, a better tool to survive. One thing's unfortunate, though, is he doesn't have an Enchanted Mango, so he's going to be harassed a lot heavier by this Arctic Burn. He's going to be taking a lot more hits, but he naturally still has a HP regen pool. Not sure about that move, but that puts him into harm's way, and he does drop down 100 HP there, but again... Natural HP plus Tango equals 10 HP per second. A Mango would just make that one more. Alrighty, so we've got Ake here trying to get a, a flanking Courier Snipe. That's not going to happen, though. They do I'll probably see him use the Observer Ward, so I'm expecting they'll be able to maybe get a D Ward on that. Oftentimes you'll see the, the Ward here, but in this case he places it just on the high ground, and while it gives less vision, it still gives them some really good idea of what's happening on the high ground there. Rash is actually going to get caught by a shackle here from S4, forcing the blink back, and that will be all. Cheshire Cat, farming under tower. He should die once this landing phase. If I know Loda's tiny, you're going to expect him to, to make the jump and uh, make that toss combo happen pretty soon. But uh, for now, Prophet at 500 HP, vulnerable, but still happily farming under his tower. Admiral Bulldog harassed to oblivion here. He only has this last tango left. He's going to be forced back to base. Bring some mangoes next time. That's that's what Disruptor says. Alrighty, so we've got some good stacking. Actually, they are going to go for that avalanche play, but it's not going to work out for them. In the meantime, you got some great stacking coming through. They broke down the tree line with the Wisp Tether, and this allows the Bane with those boots to just double stack. So he'll babysit Windranger. They'll get those stacks out, and Tiny will burst and farm. Now we're going to see S4. Shooting from low ground to high, another nice shackle, but only a second and a half in duration. Brain wants a sneak attack with a quick brain sap kill, but Barash has salved, and he's also well aware of Ake's position here. Ignum's going to rotate. He, they realize the Queen of Pain is in a tough spot here. They want to help him out, and, and they should be able to get some decent damage on us, but I'm not sure it's enough for a kill, even without Windrun. We'll see here. The Arctic Burn come out. The Shadow Strike now. Bulldog will actually rotate to help out, and uh, he might actually lane if uh, S4 feels uncomfortable. He's got that healing salve, that tango, so he should be alright. That's just a 
caution. Regeneration. Oh, of course, S4 has a regen rune banked. I'm actually surprised they didn't pressure that earlier since they did have rune vision on it. Dire did not, but Dire get lucky and uh, Alliance are able to take full <laughs> advantage of that with Bane roaming around that area. Just a little bit too scary. So let's look at early last hits here. We have Tron just behind the Tiny at 16 and 10. Um, has Mango himself, interesting. Just for, I guess, a little bit of burst mana. It aids it. Otherwise, you can just expect maybe like a Ring of Aquila, Phase, or Treads, and then Mask of Madness. Work. Oh, not the Tiny. Right now, just last hitting up a storm here. Loda has himself the Basilius for the extra armor, which helps a lot against the Furion early on. And then, otherwise, just farming up a storm. A mango for him as well. And I definitely agree with that. Tiny's mana pool is, is very frequently a problem for him in this. Uh, even with the intelligence boost to 6.85. So they're going to be looking to cover the runes here. Bane will cover up the bounty rune and it looks to give that to the Wind Ranger, Loda, or S4. In the meantime, Big Num does find himself invisibility. He'll be able to make a gank play happen. S4 has the wind run, so I don't think that's the hero they want to uh, actually bring down. Maybe they can flank here onto Admiral Bulldog. He's only got one point in mana burn, one point in Earth Spike, or the Impale, and this actually might be his death here. He'll get a TP coming in, but that's today's just profit. Cheshire Cat making sure Admiral Bulldog goes down. Tron spilling the first blood, and now getting some great push on the tower with this healing ward in play. Nice aggro manipulation as well. Keeps these Treants and the Juggernaut healthy as they go in for the kill here. If Bulldog loses this tower, and he indeed will, he's going to be in a really sore spot in terms of laning. He's only level 2, and he now has lost his tower in offlane. This is really difficult. I mean, he's still not going to be able to roam, so he just has to kind of hug this lane. But what they can do with this early of a tower kill is just start pulling harder and make it so that Bulldog has absolutely nowhere to go. Put one Observer Ward, oh, I guess they still have this one, but later they'll put a ward here, and or even, of course, here. And then Bulldog just can't get close, can't get any experience. And I would have to say that Nyx Assassin is a core that really needs some tempo behind him. Vendetta at least getting level 6 to start con tempo controlling the game. Definitely needs to have all those utilities. Loda's looking to answer back. He turns his Basilius on, burst uh, combos the creep way, but still not really getting that much chip damage on the tower. And uh, the ward, actually, I like this ward even better, because normally you see the, the possibility of them dropping a sentry there, you, you lose that vision. They just get all this uh, intel here, as you can see, the radiant vision is pulled out clearly. So this gives Tron some security, it gives uh, Bulldog some difficulty in getting his levels up, and just in general it's going to stay on the map. You're not going to put a sentry in that area very often. Good stacking, though, is really the thing that's helping out the Tiny the most. Loda might not look it, but he is very, very capable of taking these things down. Um, has to... some bottle regen to make sure that he has the mana to work with. And yeah, he'll be able to just avalanche all this stuff and take it for his own. A lot of net forward for Loda. And also it puts my nuts closer to the relocate. In the meantime, stack farming is going to come out for Tron as well, just clearing up a double here, it looks like, and Cheshire Cat will take the western camp. But Loda will uh, at least uh, profit from this. While Ake is only level 3, he's been roaming a lot and stacking a lot, uh, Loda and my nuts should be able to get aggressive pretty soon. But again, they have to worry about the glimpse, as well as the Nature's Prophet teleport, and uh, in a few levels, Big Num will have an answer as well. So, they are going to heal up at the fountain, look for a relocate play from there, most likely. But I don't think that Bulldog's going to be the one to set it up, unless he baits Tron into a corner. Tron looking in the trees, but it looks like Bulldog will be able to buy him. Oh. Queen of Pain can blink away, Disruptor can glimpse. So, it looks like the, the pickoff should be on Big Dumb, but he's hiding as deep as he can on the tree line, so... He's just going to keep on farming. Pretty early for the net worth and experience, but we can just see a very even game. A little bit of experience favoring Alliance because of that jungle play, but uh, not much. 
We're also going to see Queen of Pain go for this 2-1-2-1 uh, one, one build, uh, going and picking up the Sonic Wave for level 6, despite putting 2 in the Shadow Strike. So, has some unexpected burst potential, but S4 keeps him healthy here in the lane. Oh, down bottom, Bulldog going to get caught inside the Sprout, and it's going to be a really cute response, as now the Omni Slash kills off the Nyx, but the combo kills off the Nature's Prophet and Tron as well. The Shackle connects onto J4, and Alliance just make a huge turnaround happen. We're going to get blo blocked by a creep quite a bit, but just needs one more hit, and Ake will secure it. Wisp will, however, be sent back to this position here, and Queen of Pain's more than happy to drop the Sonic Wave and bring him low. So, at least they, they knew that they TP'd from the jungle and were able to take advantage of that, but even still, a great response from Alliance uh, evens up the score 3 for 3. So I'm curious, oh, L Bloda just pops the mango, goes for the kill, and with the power shot, oh man, what a snipe. S4 really just shot calling it perfectly there, knew their first damage with that max power shot, and Queen of Pain didn't stand a chance. They'll just go ahead and refill it up, bottle TP forward, and Loda is just able to keep spamming. Up top, Bulldog gets some free farm here, where he sorely needed it. He's gonna go ahead and just sit here in the safe lane, get his level 6, and very well might be going for a dig on this game. I mean, the burst potential we just saw is great. Add in some pure damage from Brain Sap, you can bring anybody down. But if they want to keep that going, they need a little bit more, and I could definitely see a dig on from the Nyx Assassin. Probably just dig on one, then go into Blink Dagger, but it just seems like a overall like a great build up for this particular game. The Sharkat will farm up the jungle. Did not go face boots, so he's definitely changed his build over the years. And uh, well, he always used to go face. He's instead going to go for Treads and Orchid, and look to things more difficult for Alliance. Whether that's silencing the Bane's Fiend's grip. Uh, making it sure the Nyx Assassin can't use any of his spells to escape. Um, obviously, Windranger, she'll probably pop off the Windrun before she gets silenced, but that's not always going to be the case. Juggernaut going to be farming the jungle here, and they're going to make a two-man smoke ink right into him. Will he be able to break it? Oh, uh, just narrowly misses. Goes for the rune, but can they find that opening? With the Fiend Script, they should be able to. He doesn't get the spin, but... There is a healing ward, S4 doesn't care, he'll just nuke him down with the relocate on top. And this is the strength of these longer duration disables. Uh, you see very commonly offlaners like Clockwork, Beastmaster, and uh, in this case the Nyx Assassin paired up with the Tiny West to guarantee uh, the relocate will net a kill. Well, this works just the same for Ake as he smokes right up to a Juggernaut and Puts him <laughs> disabled for a five second time period. Now with the shackle shot landing up Rush with the siege creep, they're able to find themselves another kill. And that's that's for taking full advantage of the magic immunity change on the siege unit for the radium. So Alliance right now running a train over Alliance 6. 3 is your kill score. And the tier 1 tower should be falling, but Nature's Prophet wants to change that. He really wants to keep his towers up as long as possible and uh, keep lanes push out the other way. But how do you stop this monster truck of a tiny? Well, is not going to be in range here. Just shy of it, but the lines are kind of retreating together, which is very important against the Disruptor. If anybody gets kind of caught out all, all alone, they can just be isolated and, and destroyed. But if they move out together and always are still in range to get back in the fight if necessary with that Blink Tiger, then, then they'll be fine. Smoke times three coming out from the Power Rangers, and Nature Prophet, of course, able to jump in along with this. So they want to gank the jungle. Tiny, going to be the target. They'll get the slows they need to bring him down, and Nature Prophet's TP is even going to be canceled. Tron finding the quick Omni Slash to bring him down. I like how they use the drum active there for the Juggernaut as well. That attack speed boost is really strong. And, uh,. Well, it's not as strong against the Wind Ranger because she can dodge the physical auto attacks that occur between Omni Slash. Uh, it's still good against everybody else. Wind, Wind Ranger can only she can dodge the auto attacks. She can't dodge the slashes of Omni Slash. Whereas uh, with Alliance, as other heroes, they pretty much take the full damage. Smoke warding coming out from Ake behind enemy lines might be able to find a nice little gank there on somebody farming the jungle a little bit overzealously. We're just gonna hear a nightmare here on mid. Okay, using that flank, they're gonna follow it up the relocate, and they're gonna go for the grip on Juggernaut. But there's gonna be a Sonic Wave quickly killing off the Bane, and now Juggernaut is free to spin to win. Nice two man stun coming out from Bulldog, but Loda getting caught in two ultimates is uh, easily going down.
Same with Bulldog. That's an actually an ultra kill for Barrage. The double damage being the kind of the finisher there. And yeah, he suddenly jumps up to 1,800 current gold at 4,900 net worth. Just looking at the fight recap real quick. That adds up to a huge swing forward for the Power Rangers. Really nice winner's curse, but most importantly, just killing off the Bane before the Juggernaut could keep acting. Dyer's middle tower is under and the net attack. worth is equaled out. Even game right now means Alliance might have to really turn to that rap mode I was talking about. Because as we get further along to the game, and arcade Power Rangers are going to be keep continuing to group up, it's actually more and more important that Alliance are spreading the map. They are unable to use the tiny Wisp Relocate without mm, significant difficulty in, in finding that opening. And I, I feel like Alliance now have to start playing that rat game, spreading the map, using Focus Fire on towers, while Tiny Wisp Radiant arms the jungle and looks for opportunities to, to jump on a certain lane. On here, goes for the Sanjin Yasha. Bulldog looks for an opportunity while that relocate is available. If he can stun J4, combo him with the Avalanche, then he might not be able to get the glimpse off to be really huge. But if he just drops the kinetic static, he can alleviate that potential. It just comes down to timing, but Tron is going to TP up top here, and uh, they're going to be trying to go on to at least the Wisp. Yeah, Wisp on the Sprout will be going down four for one, but in the meantime, they're going to jump on J4 bottom and pick him off easy. Now with the Focus Fire up, they should take the Tier 1 bottom. The Treants should aid in the Siege of the Tier 1 top. Oh, no, we're seeing a fight down here. S4 actually going to get caught by the Wyvern ultimate, and actually a really nice fight for them despite the lack of Sonic Wave. They go in, they follow through onto Ake, they will, however, eat a lot of damage from Loda, and that's going to clean up two in return. Cheshire Cat does not have TP in terms of spells. He goes for the TP item. That's not going to be enough as a uh, nice stun comes in for Bulldog. So, double kill for Loda, and uh, actually a worthy trade for them. They might still lose the top, yeah. Tron's got top lane covered, but because he didn't rotate, or was then unable to rotate back bottom because his TP was on cooldown, they lose out in kill. So they trade evenly for towers, but Alliance pull forward, and uh, they're looking for that next set of items. Obviously the Agadim Scepter for the Tiny. And I think that'll be it. Bulldog goes for the Arcanes, but what's the next item? Yeah, it is. It's either it's got to be either a Force Staff or a Dagon, and I'm rooting for the Dagon. I think there's a lot of potential in just killing off somebody with that magical damage, where Big Numb tries to like cold embrace them to save them, just outside of kill range. The the final zap of that Dagon could be the trick. So Aghanim's coming out for two members of Alliance all at once, but what does uh, Ake go for? Does he have enough gold to, to consider a Blink Dagger? It's pretty much the end-all be-all item for Bane's initi initiation toolkit, but got to save a little bit more to find it. In the meantime, we're going to see <laughs> every time that really could come up, uh, their Vendetta comes out, and he looks for an opportunity, Bulldog does, but they're actually going to see this sentry. Bulldog won't be walking into harm's way. He'll just be stalking here on bottom against actually all five heroes of Arcade Power Rangers. They'll smoke up, however. Bulldog will just uh, keep waiting. And you see the line drawn here into the enemy jungle. They they know they're farming in this area. Observer Ward. Arcade Power Rangers are going to try to find an opening. Might be able to stall the Agate of Scepter of the Tiny a little bit, but it all comes down to what spells come out first. It's got to be leading with the Static Storm Kinetic Field or the Winter's Curse, and they'll just go for the Curse. Am I nuts? Fighting his own teammate. We'll actually eat a lot of Omni Slashes for mitigation, but it doesn't matter. With three, no, all five ultimates committed, they'll certainly get that those two kills. Just kind of have to rest on their laurels for about 90 seconds before, for everything to come back up. So it does delay the Aghanim Scepter for the Tiny. He'll still be having it in, in about two minutes time. So a big aspect of the Juggernaut is really where he starts investing the item value, because there's two ways you can build the Juggernaut in this case. You either 
want to go for as much damage in Omni Slash as possible. You see items like Mask of Madness, even the Moon Shard for attack speed there. Or you look for ways to counter out your opponent so you can actually just do regular right clicks. And that means you need a BKB against Craggy Exterior, and you need an MKB versus Wind Run. So I prefer that build, but it will be a pretty expensive lift. Being MKB alone will be the next 10 minutes of farming alone. And uh, Cheshire Cat's Orchid, unfortunately, has been delayed considerably. He's died three times. He's only farmed 64 last hits. And I'm wondering what happened that the Queen of Pain and the Nature's Prophet have been unable to farm really anything. Obviously, Tron's taken a bit off the map, but for the most part, it just comes down to the fact that Alliance are constantly forcing them into fights, keeping them from farming. So the result of that being now Cheshire Cat's Orchid is only going to be coming out at around 19 or 20 minutes, just makes it far less effective overall. But S4 looks to be caught here. Wind Ranger has to, does not have power shot to break through the tree. It just has to wait it out. Doesn't have phase to get through Cheshire Cat. It's going to get glimpsed back. Great body blocks. Great sprout play. And S4 going down. That was just these minor timing aspects. Like the phase boots would have made it a lot easier to get past Cheshire. And then the wind run could come out. But uh, it just didn't work the way that S4 intended. And he gets caught. And obviously they couldn't relocate on that with the Winter's Curse, with the glimpse in play. So they just uh, lose it here in the end. Now they do have an option here on Tron though. Can they get the perfect combo? Nice Impale coming in from Bulldog and they'll follow it up with Dagon, Ava, and Toss. Tron down to 150 HP as he tries to drum away, but a blink forward from Loda puts him one hit from death. Spirits will happily claim. We're gonna see over a return kill onto Ake as he gets caught out. Big Num may be nightmared, but can they actually turn that into a kill? Uh, just gonna go onto the Nation's Prophet, but he just Orchids and TP is away, leaving the Wyvern for dead. In the end, 13 to 15 is your kill score. Killing off only supports in exchange for the Juggernaut and the Wyvern. Barrage, though, might be able to find something. No, the Shadow Strike will be blinked and the Haste Rune just doesn't mean enough. Oh! Finds a narrow opening as its trees stick to the Nyx Assassin, and he's able to just pop both cooldowns for the win. So, another bloody battle. Uh, just keeps this game moving. <laughs> Seeing a thousand net worth actually swing forward for Arcade. The first second, uh, advantage they've had in both gold and experience, but I don't think Alliance intend for that to remain for very long. You've got the Aghanim Scepter, double damage on Wind Ranger. You've got Loda in the pit with his tree. And yeah, they're going to be able to clean up Roshan and, and start just going for hard push. As long as they space well enough for the Wyvern ulti, they'll be in a position where they can just absolutely tear it through every structure in their way. I think you give... It looks like they're, they want to give low to the Aegis, but I would say S4 is the better Aegis carrier. So yeah, he's going to drop his Null Tally, and there it goes. The Immortality goes for the Wind Ranger, who is just much better at sieging in this kind of position, with only 15 second cooldown on Focus Fire. And now you got to wonder, what's Arcade's next move? Can't really kill the Wind Ranger easily. She's got enough tanks to survive through the spells with that Aghanim Scepter. 14, almost 15 HP. And then she'll be able to wind run through everything but the Omni Slashes and the spin from Juggernaut. So she seems a little bit too tanky to go down just yet. However, almost walking into a sentry ward is Admiral Bullock. Really just has to play it very carefully how he moves this next bit. Also, the relocate has to be in a very careful position too, or that could be. Interacted. We'll see. Bulldog right now gets a little bit of intel on Tron. If he wants to go, though, this could be actually the bait of the century here for Arcade Power Rangers. And Bulldog just waits out the Medetta. He will fall back. They're all hiding under the Sentry Warden, and they're not actually going to go for the play. Right now, Tiny Wisp. They want to make something happen. But going into Arcade's lineup, once again, is just too dangerous. So they'll keep farming away, they'll keep the lanes pushed out, and if they see an opportunity to just start clobbering towers, then that's what they'll do. Bulldog, once again in the guise of Vendetta, finds himself a uh, Winter Wyvern. This could be a pretty easy kill for them if they just commit one more hero. They're going to be rotating two in, but we'll see. Quick damage coming in onto Big Numb, and just the Spirits and the Dagon going to be enough. So they even kind of scouted out them moving that direction, but it just didn't get them much. And uh, we're just going to see Focus Fire take the top tier one. Now there are going to be only three Outer Towers standing for Arcade. Just 
Tier twos. And you really gotta count <laughs> as much as you can for those kinds of uh, structures, because you need them every little bit against the Alliance Rat. Top tower has fallen. So, hard siege coming in. They can do this because of the Aegis of the Immortal. And you see they're keeping their distance just enough. The Winter's Curse really can't hit on uh, more than two heroes. Generally less. Oh, Bulldog tanking the smoke like a champ. Do they have the dust? Do they have any protection? No! Bulldog just gets the initiation under Barrage. But the Winter's Curse will keep him alive for now. Sonic Wave onto two. Bane's Grip glimpsed out. But Tiny is gonna be going down nuts shortly thereafter. S4, they leave him at for last since he is the Aegis Carrier. And while Ake will slip away, S4 has no chance. Buys out for the crit, but definitely dying here. And my goodness, did they just outplay them in that team fight. Yes, uh, the detection was lacking. They see, oh, that's more still doing his thing. Trying to do his thing anyways, but he can't finish off J4. So yeah, uh, the jump on the Queen of Pain was nice, but the Winter's Curse was even better. That Winter's Curse just did so much work in that team fight and saved the Queen of Pain's life. Was able to get a good Sonic Wave off, and they followed through with a beautiful Omni Slash. And uh, we're not going to see either the MKB or the BKB build coming in from Tron. He just wants to build up his raw health to survive against Burst. And that comes back to the Dagon. If Admiral Bulldog invests in a very expensive 400 magical damage, you just get 400 extra health to try to compensate for it. And we'll see that Scotty build on the SMY instead. We're going to see Barrage hit again, but I'm not sure if they actually get him. Yeah, just barely. No glimpse, no response from the Disruptor. He's just shy of it. The cooldowns. And Tiny goes in for the AC. As you would expect. Glimmer Cape up for the Bane. And that's about it. Not really any new items other than the Disruptor working towards Ag's very long term. Back and forth this game goes. Experience and gold traded very frequently, but. Just gotta go back to the towers. Well, Arcade have the ability to push it out a little bit with the Nature's Prophet. He's gone for a combat build more than anything else. He's not looking to rat. Bulldog. <laughs> Another rats. He's uh scurrying about. He's trying to save S4. He's gonna get caught inside his crowd. They're gonna look to turn it around at least on a Cheshire. The Dagon will or the mana burn will kill off the Nature's Prophet. Four turns with the focus fire onto J4, but he glimmer gets glimmered back, and S4 is gonna be going down instead. Bulldog. Trouble here. Gonna be taking a lot of damage, but in the meantime, Loda's right here on the tier 3 tower. Takes the second that they start fighting on bottom lane, he takes the full opportunity to take out half of this base tower's HP. And because he knows there wasn't a big rotation for him, he's just gonna keep going for it. He's not gonna be able to blink out of this one. That might just be committing to his death. The relocate is gonna be able to pull him out just in time. So. That was a, a bit of a close call, but there were no disables to stop the Wisp, so the Wisp will die. And that's for a tier 3 and a tier 2. They're happy for it. I just got a... So oh, okay. Glimmering forward. Nightmare for now to buy time. And then he'll Fiend's Grip for the kill as Loda comes in. Um, kills the Healing Ward. Taking his time here, but the Avalanche, the toss, it should be enough. There it goes. And the pain will fall, and that's a minute downtime for her. So, AC complete, and Bulldog will go for the leveling of the Dagon, instead of going for Blink after Dagon 1. It's an inefficient pickup, but it continues to allow them to just finish somebody off quick in the fights, and that's as important as anything else. Since you will most likely get a Blink on Bane, now that he's finished the Glimmer, I guess the Dagon ranking is still a good pickup. It just comes down to whether or not it nets them kills. If it's overkill, like we've seen in the past couple of Bulldog ganks, then I wouldn't say that it has that much value, putting more and more recipes into it. But, of course, if it sets you that kill up for you, then that's great. Sentry Ward's just... That's the one thing that Power Rangers are, are failing on this game, is their detection is just coming out too late. Their smoke has broken twice. First time they didn't have any detection, now they have two sentries, but neither one will catch B Mr. Bulldog. So, he just gets all the intel, he breaks down their ganks, Tiny keeps farming, up to 15,000 net worth. He's got 7, 4, and 6 on the KDA. 
a little bit behind the Juggernaut, but not by much. And he's see killing off a lot more towers than Juggernaut ever could. Gem up. Oh, hearing the Orchid come out? Just for creeps. Cheshire Cat, you're really messing with me. So, we're going to be seeing the BKB come out for the Nature's Prophet pretty soon. Scotty is almost up for the Juggernaut. And right now they're just trying to use this Gem True Sight to bait in Bulldog. They expect him to come from this angle, they'll just group up, and as soon as the, he comes within Gem range, they find him out. The gem has been transferred over to J4 from Big Dumb. They feel he's just a little bit tankier, and you can see the 200 HP obviously makes that so. Still though, Alliance seem pretty happy to farm for now. Push out lanes, and then whenever a fight is forced on one side of the map, you can expect the, the tiny IO to be on the other. Juggernaut needs to look for BOTs, and in general, they just need to find a strategic answer to the smoke coming out. All five heroes, no relocate required to get in position, and they're going to be looking for some... This is the perfect time, too, because Roshan is just about to spawn. They don't necessarily know that. This is like the minimum timer for Roshan, but they couldn't be luckier. In fact, it is going to be spawning right now. They will see it, and they will be able to take right before it. Oh, Alliance really just got a, a huge win there, but... Gem does scout this ward, they have to be suspicious, J4 gets caught in the avalanche to toss the power shot and will be cleaved down before the static storm comes in. Now Lodo's all by himself, but Cheshire Cat killed off quick, and the Omni Slash is not enough to bring down Lodo yet. There's gonna be the combo onto Tron, big damage coming out, and despite the cold embrace, it looks like he'll fall to the brain sap. They will buy back on the tiny, nuts, getting glimmered out, not gonna survive, and Barash hit by yet another amazing tackle shot from S4. They'll look to pursue, they've got tools to do so, but will Big Nuts slip away? Glimmer is up, B, and he will actually survive, but Roche is most certainly going to Alliance for the second time this game. And uh, with S4 having another Aegis, this could be huge. This could be them taking a lane of racks off of Immortality alone. Go, little tree, go, you can do it! He scouts out the pit, wants to claim Immortality for himself, but he gets cleaved in twain. So. That will be actually Lotus Aegis, and uh, I guess that's mostly because he just used buyback. You look at the buyback status, uh, obviously S4 will be able to sit, keep his as long as he doesn't just hard buy the Daedalus. If he farms just a little bit more, he'll have the Daedalus and buyback. The Aegis is more valuable on the Tiny. And Bulldog will hold on to the gem. Just a great pick of him since he's able to know whether or not they see him through sentries or through another gem. No, Meantime, the BKB coming up for the Nature's Prophet in a very short time, but the Queen of Pain working on hers as well. These are these are key pickups to survive all this magical nuke damage. Blink dagger on the bane. Again, that's, I mean, when you've got two blinks and a relocate, you really don't need the Nyx to have that extra positioning tool as much. I mean, it's still nice to have, of course, but you can still hit two mana impales as Bulldog shown, blink or not. Actually, I'm starting to like this Dagon build in this case. It just comes down to the circumstances, and this, this game seems to just want more damage as quickly as possible. Because if they can be a, enough threat to hold their own in a fight just with three heroes, the other two can be laying waste to the barracks. And that's going to be a BKB for the Tiny as well. Mostly against the Disruptor, but as mentioned, J4 is looking for that axe. <laughs> Look, interesting movement here. Again, he's not really afraid since he knows what the enemy is bringing bear against him. But there, there's, there is that chance of getting unlucky and the enemy drops the sentry ward right on top of you and you don't have a blink to get away. Just depends on how, how greedy you are for that information, scouting things out. Invisibility. Dragonaut has 2700 HP, his healing ward obviously an invaluable tool for surviving in the fights, but he's gonna have a hard time actually killing off this tiny just because now tiny has the ac armor he's got this full craggy exterior and then of course the wind ranger she has her wind run so radiance bottom tower has fallen 
Yeah, he's he's gonna have a really hard time dealing off this tiny, but we're gonna test that soon. It's gonna be on the disruptor and the wyvern. If they can get a big combo here with their ultimates, they can just kill Loda outright once. But we're just gonna see nuts commit the overcharge and look for that play. Tron will not get hit by the shackle shot, so he'll be fine. Catabull gets thrown up in the air, and S4 actually eats this ultimate. S4 is down for the count, and now Alliance need to make everything count. They'll combo up on Tron, but he's just too damn tanky with the cold embrace. Heals. J4 drops the kinetic, keeps himself alive, and now Tron can follow through onto the supports, killing off Nuts, then looking for Bulldog and Ake. But there is going to be a buyback on the Wisp, and they are bringing in that Fountain regen to heal up Loda. Overcharge, bottle, now glimpse back, a great glimpse coming in from the Disruptor. And the Wisp buyback is for Nott. They're going to have to retreat. That fight was already extremely favorable for Power Rangers the second that they got the combo on the Wind Ranger. When you take Wind Ranger out of the fight and she doesn't have that Aegis to fall back on, you've already taken away a huge chunk of Alliance's damage. I mean, Wind Ranger S4 only did 90 damage in that fight. While Tiny tried that with the 6600 he was able to put out, uh, attack after attack, just wasn't enough to do more as much damage as they needed. They lose the Wisp, they lose his buyback, and Loda, back to the fountain once again. What's up? Everybody's keeping to the front line. Really just want to get something done. But the Radiant Observer Ward is going to be scouting out the Nyx's movement and probably everybody thereafter. Yeah, there's the Tiny. So, with that in mind, they are now going to be playing very appropriately defensively. And they're going to be waiting out this Winter's Curse Ultimate, which actually is already back up. I really feel this Winter Wyvern pick in response to the Wisp is what's weighing them the game to the, uh, at this point. They've done so much work against Alliance in the big fights, and it really comes down to their ultis. Um, if win if S4 maybe got his win run off before he got hit by the Winter's Curse, I bet the fight would have been strung out a little bit longer, but still, no matter how you look at it, Power Rangers are really dominating when it comes to those 5 on 5s, but Alliance are still just going to go really at it at all full strength. They can relocate top if they need to, but we're going to see the Winner's Curse already on S4, and it will disable Nuts too. He still gets the tether, overcharge play, but the Cold Embrace keeps Queen of Pain up. They focus Tron, who just pops the Omni Slash, and he's invulnerable, at least for now, now going to be hit, as he actually gets craggied out of the Omni. So... Uh, no, this time, the Winter's Curse not doing what it needed to do, the Disruptor dying very early in the fight, and that's the game. You lose one fight, an Alliance will just bring you down. Didn't have enough damage to kill off anybody there, and on the contrary, Alliance brought down heroes before they could even get their spells off. Uh, very nice game from Alliance. Uh, they they only performed the, the rat play once, but it was enough to keep Arcade in their base. They never once beyond the river like they did on bottom lane at least never again and from that point forward it just came down to spacing as long as they didn't get a core hero locked in the winter's curse as we saw they avoided this time they're able to get all the damage in the world out and uh, bring arcade power rangers low which brings in the question what will counter out this io tiny 